Welcome to this week's episode of Alabama Grist Mill. I'm here, I'm Mike, and uh, here with Donna Causey. Say hello. Hello, I'm glad to be here again. <laughs> and it's, we wanted to give you an extra episode this week. There's an exciting uh, movie premiere coming up on Sunday night on Alabama Public Television at 9 p.m. It's about a special lady in Alabama that you might not have heard about. I'll let you tell me about who we're talking about here. Yeah, if you read articles on Alabama Pioneers last year, you probably heard about it somewhat. The movie is called The First Lady of the Revolution. The star of the show, who lives in Montgomery, Alabama, and she believes Believe it or not, she's 99 years old, and she's still active. Doing, <laughs> doing great. Doing, doing great. great. She, she's a remarkable woman. I mean, she got interviewed recently by the Montgomery Advertisers because she was out boating in December along with everybody else. She's very involved in civic affairs and has always been. But she she actually was the first lady of Costa Rica, believe it or not. Oh, wow. Yeah. And she's an Alabama citizen before she became the first lady of Costa Rica. And now she lives, like you said, in a uh, Montgomery today. And, and Montgomery today, and not many people realize it probably in, that live in Montgomery, except the, probably her close friends, I'm sure. May 6th, she's going to have a birthday, and she'll be 100 years old. And she still works at the magazine that she started 30 years ago. Still very active and going strong. What magazine, what magazine is that, do you know? Yeah, it's called the River Region Living Magazine. And it's a, it's a lifestyle magazine she helped start it about 30 years ago. She often contributes to the Montgomery Advertiser, so you may have seen some articles about her. But she, we, I don't think we've mentioned her name yet. What's her name? Oh, <laughs> we're talking about her like crazy, but we haven't mentioned her name. Her name is Henrietta Boggs McGuire, and she's had a... And she was the first lady? First lady of Costa Rica, and, it can, and she was in a revolution as well. So let me tell you a little bit about the story. That's what the documentary documentaries about on Sunday. If make plans to see it because it is really exceptional. But she um was born. Yeah, I think it's a been, it's been an award winning documentary. I know it's been out for over a year now. Over a year now, yes. It been a lot of film festivals and won a lot of awards. Deservedly won a lot of awards because it's an excellent film. It it is. The director is Andrea Kalin and she's done a wonderful job. Actually Henrietta tells the story herself in the film, which is she's a remarkable storyteller. So that's even more enjoyable. And being able to meet her and I was a big thing. Let's go ahead and hear some of the story. Kind of give us an overview of it. I mean, and uh, no spoilers. It's about her life. And uh, when she grew up in Birmingham, she moved here from South Carolina. She's born in South Carolina, but she moved here to Birmingham with her parents. And he started a construction business. And But she went to Birmingham Southern and had a aunt and uncle who lived in Costa Rica. So one summer, she was she's kind of restless and wanted to do something for her summer vacation. Now you can imagine this is back in the 19, this is, she was born in 1918, so probably, i say about 20 years after that, about the 1938, she had decided she'd take a trip to Costa Rica to visit her aunt and uncle who had a, a coffee plantation down there. And while she was there, she fell in love and she met this nice young man who was very active in the country and he did not... What was his name? His, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm leaving out all the names. His name is Jose Figueres Ferrar. I think that's the way I, you pronounce it. <laughs> we're Southerners still, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're Southerners. We're not Costa Rican, so I'm sorry if I messed it up. But she met him, fell in love and they got married so she wound up uh, living in Costa Rica but her husband did not like what was going on in his government because the communists were the communists were influencing a lot of everything that was going on and he wanted a democracy lo and behold he wound up being the leader of a revolution and I'm not going to give spoilers away and tell you the whole thing so you can see how it all goes about when you watch the film yeah, on a, Sunday I don't want to tell everything it's a pretty, inti- <laughs> pretty intense uh, time though I mean it was a, a full-on revolution in, in Costa Rica. Oh, it was, and it got a lot of people to go with them. In fact, they were they were expelled to Mexico for a time. They had to live there because her husband was so involved, and it was dangerous, quite dangerous for them. She wound up traipsing through the jungles and, and the wooded areas trying to save. They had two children, and she was trying to take care of them. And while he was off fighting, I, I can't imagine that. You know, here you are in Birmingham, Alabama, and then you go off and you. 
participate in a revolution like that. That's that takes a lot of nerve and courage to do that. And she stayed with him, and they were very successful. They won the revolution. That's why Costa Rica is doing well today, is because of what they had, what she and her husband did back then. What is she able to do as a first lady? Well, she was able to get the women's right to vote, and if it hadn't been for her, they would not be voting. Over time, though, her husband, of course, was very busy setting up a new government and taking care of all the problems that they encountered there. And it was kind of hard on Henrietta. She she had two children, and she away from home, trying to raise her family, and she spent less and less time with her husband because he's so involved in politics. She was independent, so she didn't want to do things anything halfway and just be a figurehead. They had to part, and they divorced in 1954. And she took the children and went to New York City at that point, and she worked for the Costa Rican delegation and started writing then. That's how she... Uh, Costa Rica delegation to the United Nations? Yeah, the United Nations, yes. <laughs> Costa Rica delegation to the United Nations. And she started pursuing a career of writing. When did she, when did she come back to Alabama? Around 1969, she came back to Alabama, and she remarried at that point to, doc- to a doctor in Alabama and founded the River Region Living Magazine that she's working at now. She's a, she is just remarkable to talk to, though. I mean, it, when you start seeing the film and you realize, you know, she tells it just like it's just uh, regular life. What she's telling you is just so exciting. You, you, it's unbelievable that a person can experience so much in, in her lifetime. And all the uh, events that she went through and all the people she met along the way is just Remarkable. What what I find what's really unique about her? She is a true Southern lady. I mean, you, she did not change. She's always been the same person, but she still. A revolutionary. Yeah, well, I remember in the, even in the trailer where she uses talking about the her her fondness for the Southern way of life, and I think we'll play that here just so you can hear it in her words. Do not question. Do not doubt. Close your mind and believe what you're supposed to believe. The Southern way of life was something sacred. As soon as I could get away from home, I would be out there experiencing all kinds of wonderful new things. Anybody strange, anybody different, anybody who is not a white Southern Presbyterian, let me have them. That was her talking about her view of the Southern way of life and how it, and her philosophy, also how she wanted to kind of get out and experience new things. And that's what drove her moving to Costa Rica. It's an amazing story, and you know, like I said, the movie is going to be coming out this uh, this weekend, premiere on television, and it's the Alabama Public Television. And it, what's nice is you know you actually worked with you met with the director and met with Henrietta, and because they they contacted us, you know, during the uh, making of the movie. As far as you help, you know, get any information about that we had about Henrietta, so we shared whatever we had. So they premiered the movie at the Sidewalk Film Festival two years ago in August, and you got to go down and uh, and host a Q and A after the the movie and get to talk with uh, Henrietta and the director. And it's oh, a really really nice time. It really can you was. tell us a little bit about that. It really was a nice time. Uh, just getting to meet somebody so remarkable, you know. I can't. I keep saying remarkable because I hope I'm, you know, when I reach that age, I'm any something like that, you know. She's a storyteller, and and her ideas, her thoughts, her. She's just really something else to behold. Alabama ought to really do something about recognizing her from all she's been through and all she's done, and her. And she still fights for women's rights and. Very confident, even at this, even at the age of 98. I enjoyed meeting her so much. There's no honor for her in the state of Alabama right now? No, uh, and I don't know why. I mean, it's like she's almost forgotten over these years. She's just led a, led a I guess, a somewhat quiet life. I'm sure her family and friends don't say it's quiet because she's very active. But, well, but I just I find mean, it amazing. She I doesn't brag about that. herself. She's not, she's, she's a Southern woman. A Southern you know? woman. We, you don't do that. You don't do but I'm just, it's just amazing that you have somebody who is a first lady of a you know country 
That's right. <laughs> and, you know, people don't really know about her other than, you know, this, this movie down the that came street, out. You know, it's exactly. just, what was really, it was very, very moving when a Costa Rican man who came to the film festival stood up and he said, and he, he wanted to honor her and wanted to thank her. He said if it hadn't been for her and her speaking to her husband, encouraging him to remember the women, you know, that the women in Costa Rica would not be voting today. We'll add that in the podcast podcast right here of his what he said i just want to uh, give my personal uh, thanks to you i am from costa rica and um, i know that costa rica is today the way it is where freedom exists and, and there's no army because the army was abolished by Don Pepe. It used to be your husband and your seats were planted there. Well, thank you for that. So, yeah, I, I you see how instrumental or how influential and meaningful her life and her efforts during those times were that to his family and to Costa Rica in general. Exactly. And she's such an unassuming Southern lady. It's just um, amazing to behold. You know, I she, she's going to have her 100th birthday coming up soon in May. I hope Alabama remembers her somehow, you know, and, and but be sure everybody should watch this movie. It is really, it will, it will warm your heart when you meet her and he hear her speak uh, all she has to say she's a very wise lady a- andrea andrea kalen the director she just did a great job in you know capturing the uh, romance the history the adventure all of this you know and, and what a true southern woman she really is and a strong woman and because her spirit we all, <laughs> and her spirit right. exactly she did a wonderful job on the movie it's the the movie's getting a lot of awards all across the country i think you can even if you go to their website you can even schedule a showing if you have a group and all, you can schedule a showing, so you might try that too. It's sparksmedia.com. Be sure and watch it. Wonderful opportunity to see it and see everything that happened and, and see Henrietta. What else did you have that was interesting about that you when you talked to her? One thing that I really uh, noticed while I was interviewing her how much like Al- a typical Alabama person she is you know if if anybody has lived in Alabama for any length of time you'll you can feel it oh this is just like my aunt this is just like my uncle you know I I felt that spirit as I was talking to her I, she reminded me so much of my own family members so you you can see the part of Alabama that's still with her it never has left her and um so this true southern lady that is there so it's it's an opportunity to really see that spirit like i said it warms your heart just to talk to her she grew up on the south side of birmingham and it when it was really doing well her father was attracted here to the steel industry but he he was involved in the construction business with the steel industry and she went to birmingham southern so she you can imagine she never got to finish birmingham southern and they gave her an honorary degree after she became first lady of the Costa Rica. She deserved it. She didn't go back after that summer vacation because she fell in love and married and her husband became the president of a, of Costa Rica. And she's written a, she's written a memoir of her years in Costa Rica. It's called uh, Married to a Legend, My Life with Don Pepe. She called her husband Pepe. So that was his nickname. And you'll hear her say that throughout the film. That's what she's been trying to say his name, which I'm not very good with. Jose Figueres Ferrar. I believe it's the way it go. It's an amazing story, an amazing woman, in the, in a, in, and definitely, you know, a true Southerner and from the state of Alabama. It's just an incredible story. We wanted to kind of get this out so, you you know, when we heard about the, the premiere coming up, we want to make sure everybody got a chance to see it. It's going to premiere Sunday night, this Sunday, March 25th at 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central Time. So, on that's on Alabama Public Television. So, definitely set your DVRs. 
Don't miss the story because it is a it's a wonderful story and a wonderful adventure about a, an Alabama native. And we'll also have a link in the podcast notes and we'll have it on our Facebook, Alabama Pioneers Facebook site. If you click it, you can put your zip code in and see what channel it's going to be on to make it easy. Yeah, she was an inspiration. I mean, when you meet someone like Henrietta and the life she has led and the choices she has made in her life, now she still stayed the Southern Belle from the, that she was at the very beginning and conquered all kind of worlds, <laughs> kept her spirit up even in tragedy and suffering and that I'm sure she had to go through in the revolution. It is, and the, the divorce too. I mean, she loved her husband, but she had to leave him because she wanted to, she wanted to have a real marriage and it was just not going to be that way uh, with him being in politics in Costa Rica. I guess that Southern spirit is still there. Even today, she's that way. If you ever get a chance to meet her, you know, be sure and take the opportunity because she is, she's remarkable to listen to and, and share a few minutes with. We'll go ahead and uh, wrap this episode up, a special episode up. We'll let actually let the person we're talking about take us out with her words of wisdom, which uh, I think we we all can take it take to heart. We'll I say agree. bye. I'll let you. <laughs> I'll let you say bye. And, <laughs> bye. And uh, and, uh, and uh, if I don't get to see Henrietta for our hundredth birthday, I will sure be thinking about her. We'll let Henrietta take us out here, and we'll see you next time on Alabama Grisbill. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. There is no silver bullet to uh, resolve your problems. You just pursue what is for you of value with the hope that you will never give up, never let go, keep struggling towards whatever you think is of value. Maybe accepting the idea that satisfaction comes in the struggle itself rather than achieving it. It's like the journey is half the fun. And so that perhaps is the way to satisfaction for some of us. Maybe that's the best that you can hope for.